In the last video, I talked about composing types and creating ADTs. I also explained what are some types and product types and how to extract data from our composite types using pattern matching. In this video, we will take a closer look at pattern matching and how to extract data from option, either, and list. And in the end, we will take a quick look at a library called TS Pattern and how to do pattern matching with it. Let's start with pattern matching on option types first. As a refresh, let me show you how option looks like. So option of A is either sum A or none, and sum and none looks like this. If this looks new to you, please check out my video on option. All right, let's define a function called match to do pattern matching on option. What match function does is it converts option of any type A into any type B. In order to do that, we need to tell match for each variant in option how to convert them to type B. Option has two variants, so we have two cases. In case our value is none, we want to call this function and get B. If our value is sum, we want to first unwrap the value inside it, call this function and receiving B. Then match function expects to receive the option of A to convert it into B. Let me import the types option none non value and some type some function and is none type card. So the function itself, first it is receiving two callbacks, then it is going to receive the option, and then what we want to do first is we want to check if the option is none. If it's none, we're going to call on none. If it's sum, first we want to unwrap the value and call on sum on top of it. Let's try this. I'm going to define a constant maybe num of type option of number. And the value is sum 12. And let's do pattern matching over maybe num. So match. And in our pattern matching, we want to convert our option of number to a string. So in case our value is none, we want to say num does not exist. And in case our value is sum, we are receiving a number. So we can say, for example, num is a. If you console log this result, we see num is 12. If I change 12 to none, we see num does not exist. Right now, we are returning a string for both none and sum. But sometimes maybe you want to return two different types. Let's say, for example, minus 2. Then we are seeing an error here. How can we fix this? Let's check out our match function definition. So match for none is returning B and for some it's returning again B. We want to return a different type. Let's say C. Then the match function is not returning B anymore. It's returning B or C because for none it returns B and for some it returns C. And finally, let me add the type parameter here. And as you see, the error is gone. If I save, we see number minus two. And if I change this to sum, for example, 15, we are seeing a string num is 15. 
This kind of matching, at least in FPTS, is called match W. And W stands for wide, which is its meaning that we are widening our output type. All right, let me clean this up and let's move on to our next type constructor. And I'm going to keep this as a reference on the top. First, let's check out the either really quick. So either of E and A is either left of E or right of A. And left and right are defined like this. Again, if this looks new to you, please check out my video on either. All right, let's jump to defining the match function. So type match. It's a generic function, a, b. Either is a sum type. It has two variants. One is left and the other is right. So we need to define a function for each of them. So on left, first it's going to unwrap the error inside it, call this function and return b. And in case it's right, we are going to first unwrap the value inside it, call on right with it to receive b. The match next expects to receive our value, which is in either of E and A, to convert it into B. Let me import the types on the top, either left type, left function, right type constructor, right function, and our type card is left from lib either dot yes the function itself match of that match is receiving two callbacks on left on right then it receives our either and finally the body of a function first we want to check if the either input is left or not if it's left we first want to unwrap the value the error inside it and call on left with it. In case our value is right, first we want to unwrap the value inside it and call on right with that value. Let's try this. I'm going to define a constant error or num, which is of type either of string or number and it has a value of right 12. I want to do pattern matching over error or num. With our pattern matching, I want to convert this again to a string. In case we have an error, we get a string. And let's say the error is error happened. And in case of right, a good value, we are receiving a number. And we can say num is a. If we try this, we see num is 12 string. And if I change this to left of, for example, bad input, we receive a string, error happened, bad input. All right, let's move on to our next type constructor. I'm going to clean this up again. And let's add a little bit more space. The match function for list is again receiving a list of any type A and converts it into B. List is again a sum type of nil or cons. Actually, let's take a quick look to our list. So list type is nil or cons. Nil to specify the end of a list and cons to specify a node 
that holds value of type A into head and then points to the next list. If this looks new to you, again, please check out my video on list. So list is a sum type. We have two variants. We have two cases. In case we are seeing nil, we want to call this function to get B. And in case we have cons, we first want to unwrap head of type A and tail of list of A. Call this function and receive B. Next, match is expecting to see a list of A to convert it into B. Again, let's go up and import the types. List. We have nil type, nil value. We have cons type constructor, cons function, and our type guard is nil. So our match function of type match receives two callbacks on nil on cons. Then it's going to receive the list itself. Inside the body of the match, first we are going to check if the list is nil. In that case, we are going to call on nil. If it's a cons, we are going to unwrap the values inside the cons and call on cons with it. The first value is head and the second value is tail. Let's try this. I'm going to define a constant my list, which is of type list of number. And let's create our list. So we have a one pointing to list two, pointing to list three. Let's do pattern matching over our list. So my list. In case we are receiving nil, we are returning in a string saying list is empty. And in case we are seeing a note, we have the head of type number and tail of list of number. So we can return, for example, saying head is head. So we pattern match our list to a string. Let's try this. If I save, head is one. And if I change this to nil, we receive list is empty. And by the way, inside the cons callback, I'm ignoring the tail just for the simplicity of the example. In the last, I want to mention a great TypeScript library for pattern matching called TS Pattern. While we are waiting for a native support in JavaScript for pattern matching, this library is doing a great job filling the gap. Let me modify our example using TS Pattern. So first, I'm going to comment out the match function. I'm going to comment out this result. Let's import the match function from TS pattern. I'm going to include the TS pattern GitHub repo inside the description of a video. So const head, so const result. We want to do pattern matching over my list. And the way TS pattern is designed, it first receives the what we want to pattern match over, and this is going to return us a builder. If we see our value has a tag nil, call this function and return a string, for example, list is empty. And in case we are seeing a tag of cons, 
then call this function, which it has the, the node itself. So we have head, we have tail of type cons of number. And now it calls this function and returns head is head. And finally, we need to call exhaustive method to receive the pattern matching result on my list. Let's try this. Console log result. We see the list is empty, and if I change the list to one, two, three, we see head is one. All right. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.